Referees and teams can get comfortable with the online inspection sheet using the RoboCup humanoid website. The weight of the robot is measured with a luggage scale or any other appropriate scale that is available on site. For measuring the height of the robot, it has to lie on the plank in an upright position. To measure the height of the centre of mass, a wooden plank is balanced on a roll and a balance line is drawn on the plank. The robot is put on the plank and balanced once again. The distance from the bottom point of the foot to the balance line is considered the height of the centre of mass HCOM. The length is measured from the first rotating joint, where its axis lies in a plane parallel to the standing ground, until the tip of the foot. H-head is the vertical distance from the axis of the first arm joint at the shoulder to the top of the head. The longest possible length is usually from one extremity of the foot to the opposite hand. For some robots, it might be another configuration. For the length and width of the foot, all mechanical parts below the ankle count. In this case, the back of the servo motor is used because it is behind the back of the foot. The length of the arm is measured from the first axis of the first joint of the arm. For the diameter of the cylinder in which the robot must fit in, the width of the shoulder is measured. For some robots, the measure might differ. The T markers are measured from every side. If the markers don't have a rectangular shape, the projected area is measured. This applies for kid size and teen size only. The stand-up motion has to be performed from the back and from the front with cables unplugged, unlike in this clip. In general, handlers have to request the right of picking up a robot from the main referee. If a robot is in a dangerous situation, the robot handler can request a pickup. In this situation, the robot's batteries are low, so the main referee grants the pickup. Once the pickup has been granted by the main referee, the handler removes the robot from the field quickly and positions it inside the team area. If there are no obvious reasons for a pickup and the robot handler requests a pickup, the referee can refuse the pickup. In this situation, the handler requests a pickup to avoid the robot scoring an own goal, so the main referee refuses the pickup and the robot ends up taking a shot at his own goal. In adult size, the robot handler is allowed to touch the robot if the robot threatens to fall. Then the main referee calls for a pickup and the handler has to remove the robot from the field quickly. Once a robot has been removed from the field because of a pickup or any type of penalty, it must follow a specific procedure to come back to the field. The robot is placed near the touchline, facing the penalty mark. The handler signals the assistant referee that the robot is ready to enter and the robot starts serving his penalty. Once the penalty timer has finished, the robot can enter the field again. If the robot starts walking into the field while the penalty timer has not finished, a new penalty is given to the robot. The robot handler has to put the robot on the touchline again and the process is restarted. In this situation, the assistant referee calls for illegal entry and a new incapable player penalty is given. While the robot is serving his penalty, the robot handler is not allowed to touch the robot. If he does, the penalty timer is restarted. There are six different game interruptions. Direct free kicks, indirect free kicks, penalty kicks, goal kicks and throw-ins. 
they all follow a similar procedure which is shown here for a free kick example. When necessary, the main referee calls for a game interruption by announcing the type of game interruption. In this case, he calls for a direct free kick. The robots have to freeze when the button is pressed on the game controller. The referee then places the ball at the appropriate location and calls for the start of the preparation phase. Now robots are allowed to place themselves according to the rules. Once teams are ready or the allowed time has elapsed, the main referee announces the end of the preparation phase. Robots are supposed to freeze again. If necessary, the main referee announces removal penalty for all illegally positioned robots. Once they are removed, the referee calls for the execution of the game interruption. The attacking player is now allowed to play the ball. All robots are allowed to move, but they have to respect the forbidden areas until the ball is kicked or 10 seconds has elapsed. When an offence occurs away from the ball, the main referee does not call for a free kick or a penalty kick, but only for removal penalty of the robot which performed the offence. Now, let's take a closer look at some situations that can happen during the free kick procedure. If a defender touches the ball during the preparation phase, the main referee gives a warning to the robot who touches the ball and the game interruption is retaken. If an offender touches the ball during the preparation phase, the main referee gives a warning to the robot who touches the ball and the game is considered as playing. If a defender enters the forbidden area during the execute phase, if either the ball has not yet been played by the offender or 10 seconds hasn't elapsed, the defender receives a removal penalty and the referee calls for the execution of a game interruption. In order to leave an area, the ball must fully cross the lines. This applies to scoring goals. To evaluate if the ball moved outside of the centre circle during kickoff, as well as to determine if the ball left the field for corners, goal kicks and throw-ins. A goal is scored only if the projection of the ball on the ground has fully crossed the line. Here, a goal is scored. In this case, the projection of the ball on the ground still intersects the line. Therefore, the ball is still in play and no goal was scored. Robots have to freeze during set, phase for kickoff and drop balls, and also before and after the placing phase for game interruption. Those phases allow referees and handlers to take care of illegally positioned robots. During freeze phases, the ideal behaviour for robots is to stand still without performing any motion. However, it is tolerated that the robots keep walking on spot given they are not significantly moving on the field or rotating on themselves. Here, the robot is significantly moving. The main referee hands out a removal penalty and the handler needs to remove it from the field of play before ending the freeze phase. Handlers should always react quickly when the referee is requiring an intervention from them. When the handler starts arguing about decisions from the referee or slows down his intervention, the main referee can give him an official warning. A handler who receives two official warnings during a single game is banned from the game and needs to be replaced by another member of his team. In case one team estimates that refereeing has not been fair, it should not sign the game sheet and refer to the technical committee. If the teams complain about the refereeing, referees should remind them that they have this right. The goalie has fallen near the ball. The main referee asks the handler to be ready to remove the robot without entering the field. Since the goalie is not attempting to stand up, the referee calls for incapable player. The handler enters the field, picks up the robot and leaves the field quickly. While the referee asks the handler to prepare for intervention, the handler keeps talking to someone near the border of the field. 
since he is not cooperating with the main referee, they give him an official warning for arguing and slowing down his intervention. If the kicking robot is touched after the ball has passed the goal line, the goal counts. The robot can re-enter during the ready phase or be placed manually as a striker or a goalie during the set phase of the following kickoff. If the kicking robot is touched before the ball has passed the goal line, the goal does not count. The main referee calls for incapable player and the game continues with a goal kick for the defending team. The robot handler has to stand approximately an arm length behind the robot. Here, the distance is considered valid. If the robot handler is too close, the referee asks the robot handler to step back. If the robot handler violates this rule again during the game, the main referee gives him an official warning. Here, the referee asks the robot handler to step back. The handler starts arguing instead of stepping back, so the main referee immediately gives an official warning. In this situation, the blue robot cannot play the ball and only hits the foot of the red robot, which leads to a free kick. In the second and third situation, both robots are able to play the ball, therefore this behaviour is not considered a foul. For different stoppages that can happen during the game, the following graphics demonstrate the spot where the referee places the ball. If the ball leaves the field through the touchline, the ball is placed where it left the field. The red area marks the forbidden area for the defenders. If the ball leaves the field through the goal line outside the goal and was last touched by the defender, the ball is placed on the intersection of the centre line and the touchline on the side where the ball went out. If a penalty kick is awarded to a team, the ball is placed on the penalty mark. The defenders must place themselves behind the ball. The goalkeeper is allowed to stand on the goal line.